KC9DKV, K4SRD, back to you. K4, S, uh, give me a uh, call sign again slowly phonetically, sir. S, uh, give me a uh, call sign again slowly phonetically, sir. Sugar Radio Delta, yeah, I talked to you a little while ago. I switched antennas on a uh, dapple at about 35 feet now. Maybe you can hear me a little better. Yes, sir. You're uh, seven over on the uh, Arlington, Virginia SDR, sir. Roger, Roger. Seven over on the uh, Arlington, Virginia SDR, sir. Roger, Roger. Okay, well, we're just right off bounding. Oh, gosh, and I just went to my local antenna and you uh, killed me. Uh, come back, give me about uh, 10 seconds on your antenna system there and let me hear you. Okay, we're running a, uh, right now I'm on a folded dipole, or a fan dipole, I'm sorry, up about 35 feet. Uh, as an inverted V, um, just uh, with the ICOM 7300 and the ICM mic. Uh, Roger Brent, I uh, got a real good copy on you, sir. And uh, uh, how long have you had that uh, 7300? Well, I've had it a couple months, but I'm still learning. Uh, I did get the ALC set, like you had suggested, and uh, a couple of the other things. But hopefully, it's working a little better. Yeah, uh, so you're running about mid-scale to two-thirds on your uh, your ALC uh, by a mic gain control? Roger, roger. All right, why don't you uh, give me, uh, again, something uh, that you like best about your radio, and let me uh, see if we can get a good recording here, roger. Well, Don, it's, uh, it's a great radio. I pretty much like everything about it. Of course, just the uh, space and what have you, it really makes it light. And it's... Uh, other than the learning curve, it's, uh, it's, e it's fairly easy. It's just uh, taking me a bit getting used to because my uh, radios were a uh, Kenwood TS430 Sugar and a 140 Sugar, so that's, that's, that was my equipment until this. Uh, roger that. Now, uh, do you know how to get to your equalization page? Uh, I think so. I tell you what, why don't you, uh, why don't you take notes uh, and uh, maybe crank in just a little more top end, about uh, three clicks additional treble boost from uh, wherever you are when you figure out how to get there, Roger. Okay. Because that uh, top end really helps uh, from the articulation standpoint. It uh, it uh, helps to define the the uh, words. Uh, if you uh, don't have a very bright top end, then it's uh, in adverse conditions, which is 90% of uh, <laughs> life on the radio. Uh, it's uh, difficult to uh, copy what you're saying. So the more articulated your audio, the easier it is to uh, understand the words that you're speaking. Okay, that's uh, that's three clicks there. Is that any better? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's uh, that's a whole lot better. And uh, I would, like I said, we are recording now, so uh, uh, I would appreciate it. Maybe you give me about 15 seconds of something I don't know to get an additional uh, recording with a new EQ, Roger. Okay. Well, usually when I'm on uh, 75 meters, I'm uh, I'm running an amplifier. Like I say, right now I'm just running bare bare radio. Uh, I get on the 430 Sugar usually when I'm on the 75 meters, but the, I do use the uh, 7300 every now and then. Uh, roger, Roger. So, and you don't r run an amp on 40 for why? Well, uh, no reason. I just haven't done it lately. I haven't got things set up quite yet. So I didn't run an amp for a long time, then I finally picked one up, and I just haven't. I've been kind of working back temporary with the. Uh, for my old boss doing some odds and ends things, and I'm uh, just having a good time right now to get set up. Roger. Well, you know, uh, 40 meters can be as cantankerous as any other band, more so than maybe... Uh, you know, one of the, the lower bands. And uh, so I, uh, you know, I would suggest if you have it within your means to uh, to run run an amp on, on 40, particularly, uh, you know, Mother Nature has not been generous of late on 40, Roger. No, I know exactly what you're saying. It's, uh, it's been kind of crazy. Uh, even 75 meters has been kind of rough at night at times too lately. Yeah, Roger, I used to run... Uh, 
late at night on uh, you know on the lower bands and uh, it was always um, pretty well uh, predictable you know it did uh, you know you uh, had uh, good coverage almost every night uh, with uh, very little fading but 40 boy it can be uh, can be treacherous from time to time yeah it's uh, it's a little different i hadn't i had been on on the radio for about 10 years until i retired and uh, I kind of dusted everything off and uh, got the antennas working again and, and picked up this new radio. So uh, it, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but uh, I'm in like 7300. Roger. Well, you've got the right radio. Uh, 7300 is just a, a beautiful radio. It's uh, it's not, uh, I mean, as far as expense, it's uh, not terribly expensive. It's pretty expensive. It's more expensive than, than what I can afford. My owner did let me, uh, give me a, a 7300 for about uh, three months to uh, check it out, and um, uh, that was a, a beautiful time. Mainly we used it in the um, in the the uh, receive mode uh, capabilities because it is such a beautiful receiver uh, you know if you run it in the uh, filter one position which is actually no filtering at all filter one uh, and um, you know it's just uh, frequency response and then also you want to run it uh, uh, in um, 100 to 2900 band pass you want to always run that radio uh, in the 100 to 2900 uh, band pass Roger Roger, Roger, I got you. Yeah, my first radio was uh, actually a Linko DX70CH, and I found the receipt. I bought it in the early 90s when I first got my uh, general ticket, and uh, I paid about a thousand bucks for that. So really what I got with this for, for what I paid for it, so it's, a, it's an amazing little radio, it really is. Yes, I, I uh found the like I say the receiver I mainly ran it uh, in the receive mode against my I've got an older Yezu FT 990 but the, the 990 has been pretty heavily modified uh, receive and transmit so it's fairly well down to a hundred cycles uh, in, in the receive mode and um, I was uh, checking it out against the um, 7300 in, in the receive mode and they were very very similar as far as uh, uh, the uh, the uh, Control as far as the uh, the cur audio curve that they would would receive. Of course, uh, the 7300 um, did have a certain um, uh, more transparent uh, aspects to it than the uh, than the 990. But uh, I did enjoy running both of them. And uh, AV uh, listening to them back and forth was uh, was real interesting. Like I so say, you have to to run that uh, receiver in the uh, the filter one mode no noise flank uh, and uh, no n noise reduction uh, those two items noise blank and noise reduction just add um, um, distortion to the incoming signal so I don't I didn't run any of those uh, Roger Roger okay uh, here for, uh, ID. I won't hold it I uh, appreciate you coming back to me and I appreciate and uh, thank you for what you do to me and I appreciate uh, and thank you for what you do it's a, it's a big help to everyone that's for sure Roger Roger and I just went from my local antenna down to the uh, Arlington Virginia SDR and like I say the the uh, Arlington SDR is the only one that I found that it's uh, flat down to 100 cycles so uh, I got just the last few seconds of your transmission on that one so let me say 73 sir I appreciate you dropping by and again if you get a chance and want to uh, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search KC9VKV along with today's date 82721 we'll take you to this recording uh, 73 and you have a great day Roger take you to this recording uh, 73, and you have a great day, Roger. Okay, Jim, 73, have a great day. KC9, VKV, K4SRD. This is uh, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, the Friday afternoon QSO v like that. Uh, got about eight minutes to go here. We turn into a pumpkin. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout.